So today we will discuss about complex cleft foot, also known as atypical cleft foot. So this is a, a subtype of uh, idiopathic cleft foot which is uh, more resistant to correction and cause more problems uh, during casting. So in the in the Ponsetti's uh, uh, article, it had an incidence of about 6.5 percent of all idiopathic types of cleft foot. So approximately in 100 cleft foot, there will be around 6 to 7 uh, atypical or complex type of cleft foot. Complex club foot is usually a type of foot which has uh, uh, more rigid joints and the classic presentation is of a short stubby foot with a you know a deep uh, plantar crease, there will be a line on the plantar surface of the sole. So that is the classical presentation of an atypical club foot also known as a complex club foot. So and they have a very extremely rigid equinus. The foot is turned downwards and uh, it is difficult to uh, dorsiflex it uh, during the correction. So these are usually short stubby with a receiver equinus then uh, the plantar flexion the midfoot plantar flexion of the metatarsals cause uh, a midfoot equinus. So that again is, is a classic uh, finding in a complex club foot. They have a short hyperextended great toe. They have flexed lesser toes, there is a crease as we discuss and uh, if we see from the back there is a, uh, a deep posterior crease, uh, deeper than the usual uh, kind of club foot and the heel is, uh, is not palpable easily, it is a high riding, uh, the calcaneal tuberosity is extremely high riding and it is difficult to palpate it. So, they may even have an anterolateral bowing of tibia and they are the kids are usually normal uh, in terms of their muscle strength and in terms of their uh, neurology. The technique of correction of uh, complex club foot is, is has to be uh, you know individualized for every patient and uh, early recognition prevent uh, complications like this foot was uh, manipulated by the usual technique and it landed up with a lateral crease because of hyper abduction at the midfoot. So these are uh, these have to be prevented, and early recognition is very important. Uh, these uh, feet are usually more prone to complications as well in terms of uh, plaster sores, frequent class cast slippage, you know, frequent redding and uh, you know swelling of the forefoot and toes. They can also develop mild rock bottom deformity, and in case the foot uh, is kept on abduct abducting in uh, by the plaster. It may lead to an hyper abducted foot which is which still has a requirement in the midfoot, right. They have a higher relapse rate because of the uh, you know the stiffness in the soft tissues and uh, the, the casts usually slip out easily in these, these kids. So it can uh, when a child presents uh, with a complex club foot we need to as a clinician we should understand and we should try and identify the cause either in a virgin case it can be a de novo type of atypical club foot or in cases which have been treated with few casts it can be an acquired complex club foot as well. So sometimes the, the clinician uh, keeps on abducting and because of errors in manipulation of the club foot uh, uh, may result in an atypical kind of club foot. So that has to be kept in mind. If you go into the uh, pathology of uh, the soft tissues in these feet, so they have a fibrotic uh, shortened uh, tendoecles and that, that fibrosis extends till the mid calf region. There is contraction of the plantar intrinsic muscles, the ligaments within the foot are extremely tight, the flexor digitorum accessorius longus is present. There is basically excess epimycial fat within the muscles. So this is an ultra structural finding in these feet. And there is intramuscular fat replacement within the muscles as well and the muscle groups are usually hyperplastic. But the child is otherwise normal, there is usually no underlying genetic problem which causes a, a muscle imbalance or a neurological problem. So this is an x-ray of uh, the same feet uh, from the Ponsetti article shows all classic findings of a complex club foot where the foot has been hyper abducted and the you can see the metatarsals going out from the midfoot and there is exaggerated midfoot flexion. The, the metatarsals are flexed at the midfoot. So this is uh, midfoot equinus. So it requires early recognition and modification of the Ponsetti uh, casting technique.
So, they usually require more number of plasters. It's, uh, it's sometimes difficult to identify the talar head in these joints, but it needs to be identified. And the counter traction in these kids, uh, if we can palpate the lateral head, we can put it at lateral head and along with that we keep our index finger at the lateral malleolus. So, in the initial 3 or 4 cast, we try and uh, correct the adduction to around 20 to 30 degrees and thereafter we focus on correcting the plantar flexion of the metatarsal. So, after uh, we achieve only around 220 to 30 degrees of uh, abduction, we try and push the foot up and correct the bend at the foot, right. So, that uh, that is usually done with a, a four finger technique also known as the you know the Ponsetti four finger technique. So, the midfoot is dorsiflexed, dorsiflexed in this way. The thumb of both hand is placed on the, on the metatarsal heads of uh, first and the fifth and the counter traction is provided by the index and the middle finger on the dorsum of foot. Aim is to avoid hyperabduction. The knee is kept in about 110 degrees of uh, flexion, which is around you know uh, around 20 degrees more than the usual amount of flexion we keep in an idiopathic club foot. So this is to prevent slippage of the calf because these kids have a more tubular kind of leg, and this the we when we see that you know the parents come with their plasters in their hand, and that you know the the plaster usually slide out easily while the child is playing and uh, you know moving their limbs a tender at least tenotomy is done as usual in, like in a, in a regular club foot and uh, it may even require an early tenotomy to correct the equinus and to prevent cast slippage so uh, ultimate aim of uh, uh, ponsetti technique application in in a complex club foot is to uh, prevent cast uh, slippage and uh, to achieve around 40 degrees of abduction and then around 10 to 15 degrees of abduction. So, the final cast as in a regular uh, club foot is applied in around 10 to 15 degrees of dorsiflexion. So, this is the technique of heel cord tenotomy which is uh, which is done and uh, these are the skin complications which can happen.